everyone. It's time for Twitter Scope. Happy Wednesday. We are up to episode 87 on Twitter Scope, and I'm Don Carter. We're up to episode 87. We're going to talk today about the benefits of a live. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and get the tripod all set up. So welcome, welcome. And let me, ah, let me get that set up. There we go. It would help if I'd had that set up before. So there we go. Welcome. Hey, Jojo Keys. Welcome. So welcome to Twitter Scope. It is that time. Let me go ahead and do my intro real quick. Hey, how's it going? I'm Don Carter. I'm at Decart on the socials. Snapchat, I'm at Decart because Decart was already taken. Want to say welcome to the Daily Scope where together we're pushing back the veil of ignorance that surrounds Twitter. I don't know if you've said this or if you've had friends that have said this. I opened a Twitter account a long time ago. I just don't get it. I can't get it to work. What is the deal? So thus the birth of Twitter scope and every single day I'm answering your Twitter questions. Um, and today's topic, if you saw that, let me go ahead and put the card back up is the benefits of live social video. And I'm going to even do a little quick bonus uh, gear uh, reveal. I don't know what you call it. I'm going to show you the gear that I use to um, create these um, things every day. So if you want to go ahead and take a screenshot of that or share that, that would be much appreciated. So let's go ahead and dive in. Why on earth would people be wanting to use live social video and mix in that kind of content? Oh, there's the camera. <laughs> mix, in the, mix in that type of content into their Twitter feed. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So number one, the most obvious reason why you would want to do that, number one, it's free. It's free, and if anyone's been watching my scopes, you know I'm all about the free. So number one, it is a free way to get your message out. It doesn't cost anything. Number two, it builds audience connection. It is a great way, whether you're using Periscope, which you're on right now, or whether you're using Snapchat, whatever it is, if you are doing live video streaming, it, it's a great, great way to um, connect with your audience and let them, invite them into your story. Um, there are some phenomenal folks on Snapchat that are using um, this medium to create amazing tribes, sucking people really into the adventure uh, that they are on. And I just, um, maybe I'll do a, a scope later, an extra one of just a bunch of my favorite Snapchat follows right now. But number one, it's free. Number two, it builds audience connection. Number three, can you see that? Number three, it creates assets. And what I mean by that is when you're doing a Twitter um, your Twitter feed, what you always want to do is be thinking of what's a creative way I can come up with content. Here's an example. I've been doing work with the local Food Systems Alliance and I Snapchatted an event. Well, instead of, you know, the old school way would be to take pictures, you know, snap pictures, snap pictures, snap pictures, or shoot video. And then when the event's over, then go back home and do all your posting if you want to really be present at the event or you have to dismiss yourself from the action of what's going on to go do your social posts. Well, that's why Snapchat makes such a great tool for covering events, especially for a brand, because you don't have to, to not be present. You literally can do a snap or you can do a quick video and you don't have to do that posting thing um, and interrupt the flow. So when I say it creates assets, so like I said, I did a, I covered an event for a local food systems alliance and one of the things we were, we're at a restaurant, it was fun, it was a, like a community gathering, a lot of people that were into community gardens and organic eating, we're all meeting each other. Well, that was a great way to just capture little video snippets, little selfies with people. I did, we brought props for a selfie booth. Again, it's creating assets. You know, if you can get other people to tweet about your event with a crazy hat on, I mean, those are great things. Little tiny videos shot in Snapchat. You can download them to your phone and then use them. Quick little nine second, you know, six second snippets make great content to, to record and bring people into your story. Share those on Twitter. So I happen to use Snapchat to create a lot of those assets and then repurpose them. I can grab a screen grab, post it on Instagram. I can take a little bit of the video, put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, or put it on Twitter. So again, using live social video is a great way to just create assets. And when I say assets, they're just basically shareable nuggets. It's just another way to say that. So create shareable nuggets that are easy for you to share, but are also easy for your tribe to share. So number four, the fourth reason is that it brings focus. And again, 
What we're talking about in this media cluttered world is focus, right? That is the, that's the currency nowadays is getting people's attention because they're bombarded, bombarded with so many messages. So if you can mix up your Twitter stream with a little bit of variety, whether it's screenshots from fun events that you've taken using live social video, whether it's um, capturing a screenshot of, of a blab you've been on with some friends, or um, whether it's shooting a little bit of video in Periscope or a little actually in Snapchat because it's a little shorter, little short video and then sharing it on your other channels great, great way to cross pollinate and help spread that story. Again, it's about um, social media is social and you want to be able to use that. So again, all the old scopes are found on catch.me slash Descartes, um, hashtag Twitter scope. If you have questions or if you're watching this on the replay, use the hashtag and I will answer your questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll find someone that can. Um, so that is my little, um, live social video uh, tutorial or why I'm using it. Um, I was just explaining this to some folks that had some great content yesterday and um, they were investing money into a production studio. And uh, of course there are reasons to do some of that level of production. I'm not talking about, you're, there will always be a need for high production value digital assets. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about creating live social video, little in the moment things. So. As promised, here is my glimpse into my gear bag. So if you are interested in doing live stream or live social video, I wanna show you some of the gear that um, I have found is useful and helpful. I keep it in this nice little handy gadgety bag. I don't know, I think I got this online. So let me just show you a couple of the things that I have. Number one, headphones. You have to have headphones. If you are on the go, especially if you're at an event, um, people, what I heard someone say, people will forgive fuzzy images, but not bad sound. You have to have good sound if you're doing live social video. So plain old earphones. I got these from Sam's Club, I think. Um, but really, really, you got to invest in some good headphones. So even the ones you use for your, if you're shooting on your phone, use the ones you use to talk on the, your cell phone. So um, I... Whatever. So that's one of the things. So number two, headphones is a great, great investment to invest in a good pair of headphones. Number two, this is another thing that I found online, and this is a lav mic. And what this is, it plugs into your phone right there. And this is actually the kind that has not one, but two little microphones that you can put on. And this is great when you're out in the, out in the field or covering an event and you want to interview someone. If you only have one um, mic, that's fine. Just hold it like this and then put it up to your person that you're talking to. But again, there's nothing more annoying than having someone, um, you know, you're getting access to someone and it's a great opportunity to hear what that person has to say and then you can't hear them. It's like that, if anything, that's going to um, irritate people more. So get either a good mic. Um, again, this is a lab mic. And uh, if you use the hashtag Twitter scope, maybe I'll post out what uh, the model number of this guy was. Um, and I just got it off of Amazon. So that that was another thing. So good microphone, a uh, small tripod, and I'll show you what I'm using right now as my small tripod. I have to put all this stuff down. Look at this. This is actually, <laughs> this is actually a um, microphone stand that I got for the blabs I was on, but I found that I can just kind of drop it in. It's an, an Archon makes some great uh, portable little mounts, but this one was so flippin' cheap. And you know me, I'm all about the cheap. So let me go ahead and set this guy up. But it's really, really nice to add that stability when you're shooting some stuff. So let me go ahead and put that back in. Yeah, maybe I should invest in another Archon mount. I lost mine, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'm just too cheap. That's the problem. There we go. Small tripod, because when you're talking to people, you want to hold people's attention. Um, obviously, you want it to be stable, and uh, that's nice. It's also nice, too, when you hold it in landscape. For some reason, uh, Periscope prefers landscape, and I've heard other people say it's better to shoot in landscape. I don't know why, but I do. So there you go. Um, and then the last thing, or a couple, almost the last thing, is... Ah! <laughs> oh I forgot it's attached to my phone. <laughs> it's portable power. Sorry, guys. Oh my gosh. See, that's the beauty of live streaming. It's just like, you never know what's going to happen. Small portable battery pack. The, the process of live streaming sucks the living life out of your device. Use some kind of portable thing and make sure it's charged. Make sure it's at full capacity because a uh, empty battery is no good to you. Here's one other cute little thing that I use. I picked up one of these um, camera uh, fisheye things and I would put this, well, maybe I'll see if that works. Does that even work, you guys? 
There we go. I always have issues with it. So see, ah, is it kind of blurry? I don't know. It could be because it's dirty, but see, it kind of gives you another little look. I'll go ahead and pull that off. Yeah. So I don't use that because I just have issues putting, putting this on, but this is a nice, nice little thing to have as well. So a uh, couple more things. I always keep a stack of four by six cards pretty cool look it is a good look and especially like i found it useful if you're doing urban shots like i use that in san francisco it captures uh, better um pictures of tall buildings especially if you're close up uh the, that fisheye can be this thing fisheye very very nice doesn't didn't cost that much so those are nice again it gives you a little bit of variety a couple more things three by six four by six cards i use these i actually keep I mean, this is going to sound so weird, but I actually keep my card that I use every single time, my Descartes card, and then my Catch.me card. I usually just keep these in my glove box because you never know when you're going to have to scope. So many times I'm en route to a meeting and I have to pull over. It's like, dang, it's 10 o'clock. I got to go make my, uh, got to go shoot my scope. So just keep a couple of these that you're going to use all the time. Um, again, I learned these tricks from the other folks that are doing live social video well. Bonnie L. Frank on Periscope and Sue B. Zimmerman. Oh my gosh, these ladies are killing it. And uh, of course, former teachers. And uh, it's just always nice to have something visual. The other reason it's nice to have something visual is when people take, gives people a uh, reason to do a screenshot. So when I always, you'll notice all of my episodes, are begi I begin with the same, you know, letting people know where they are, what episode we are, and what the topic is gonna be. So if they wanna screenshot it or whatever, it's just a handy thing. So. Four by six cards, Sharpies, portable power, and then last but not least, and this isn't really part of gear, but this is a, a thing that if I was telling someone who was just beginning to use live social video in their Twitter stream, I keep a notebook. Keep track of your progress. So, of course, there are analytics, things you can use like full scope. Dot TV that will tell you who watched your scopes, how long they were on there. But again, we're talking about Twitter. I want to know what impact adding live social video had to my follower account. I want to know so that I can look back and see, okay, this made a difference or whatever. So whatever metrics you set up, uh, keep track. So um, I, I happen to keep track of the date. I know it's like, it looks like a mess, but it's just the date, the topic of what it was, the episode, and then I just keep track just for my own reference, the number of parts and the follower account that I had on Periscope. Because I wanted to see, wow, does creating content every day really affect your follower count? And it does. It's because people start to count on that content. Um, it's also helping you create a little bit of a, you know, digital library of your expertise, which is always a good thing. So this was a long Twitter scope today, but just wanted to say thank you for joining me. Um, every single day we are here pushing back the veil of ignorance that surrounds Twitter. And I haven't done my hashtag to go for a while. So this is, ah, there we go. This is Twitter scope every single day, 10 o'clock Pacific time. We're here. Use the hashtag and I will answer your Twitter questions and I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, yeah, follow me on Snapchat. It's been a fun, I've been learning a lot about stuff that's going on there. Great to see you. And again, if you're watching this on the replay, thank you so much for taking uh, time out of your day to help make Twitter suck less. So again, I'm Don Carter signing out from Riverside, California, and I will see you guys tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Bye-bye.